If you want it's Emily Fox. Today's video is going to be a book haul, but not an average one. It is a birthday book haul because today, as I'm posting this, it's my birthday. So I thought we would celebrate by uh, me sharing the books that I've been hoarding. And it's a little bit of an unboxing because some friends have been sending me books, which I'm really excited about. I was waiting for another package, but uh, it didn't arrive on time. So it means next month I will have to do another haul. Unfortunately, the first one is from a friend. I did open it. I'm cheating the unboxing, but I wanted to make sure it was the right book and it had arrived in one piece. So my friend made me add this book to my Amazon wish list because she wanted me to have it and she lives to the side of the country. So it was way more simple that way because she loves this series. This is My Brilliant Friend, which is the first book in a courtlet that she adores. I've been complaining that on my TBR, I don't have enough books with great female, female friendships. And Apparently this one has a pretty complex one you're following two friends throughout their whole lives, so obviously ups and downs. And I am excited to try it because there's a little bit of hype. I had never heard of it, but she adores it. And I feel like I've been asking the people and they love it too. So I have been completely in the dark and I just didn't know this author existed. And I'm hoping I'm gonna really love it too. I feel like I've been nervous to try some of my friends. <laughs> Favorite books because we have favorite different genres like completely different favorite genres uh, I try to make them read some sci-fi and it's it's been difficult uh, But they're trying to make me read contemporary. So I guess it's only fair <laughs> But yes, uh, hopefully I will absolutely enjoy this and binge read the courtlet because I want to I feel like that's definitely something I have been wanting to read more like books You can't put down, you know, I need this in my life So maybe not this month, but probably next month maybe with the book club if you guys are interested also speaking of trying to make people read sci-fi I want a giveaway uh, I don't know how that happened I completely forgot I even entered but on Goodreads I won the second book in the monk and robot uh, series duology by Becky Chambers and she's an author I keep trying to make non sci-fi lovers read because it's perfect to begin right prayer for the crown shy and I love the first book you're following this non-binary monk trying to figure out the meaning for their life and there's a robot they're talking I, I you just have to read it. You can't explain it. It's very character driven. It's very chill. And I just, I love her. I will read literally everything she comes out with. So I will be owning a copy of this when it's out. It's coming out in July. So I'm assuming I'm going to have to wait until then to get my copy. I'll show you whenever I get it, but I'm excited. I needed to mention, I mean, isn't perfect that I want to give away the month of my birthday. Uh, another one that is a gift is from Chapters. Do you have Chapters in the US or is it just Canada? Um, so my friend got me two books because they knew that, where is it? There you go. It's part of the haul too, technically. Uh, Bell Hooks. I read all about love already. <laughs> You'll hear my full review uh, at the end of the month, but this is a nonfiction about, you know, love and how uh, complicated it is in our society with capitalism, patriarchy, and how individualistic uh, we are. And... I overall enjoyed a lot of the quotes. I'll try to figure out uh, a way to include a couple in my wrap up, but I read this and apparently there are two more books that are kind of companion novels. So my friend gave me this one because they really liked it. This is Communion, uh, The Female Search for Love. So I guess it's like the follow-up. I am curious to see how I'm gonna feel about this one because the other one, one thing that I was less into is that towards the end becomes quite religious, which Obviously the authors talk about her faith, but I feel like I couldn't connect with the subject anymore. And I'm hoping maybe this one will work better. I'm excited. There's been some hype uh, recently about it. I mean, the author unfortunately passed away. So I think that's probably why a lot of people have been uh, putting these books higher on their TBRs. And I mean, I'm no different. So this one too. And then the other one, I had never heard of it. Uh, it's another nonfiction. I think people know. <laughs> I've been reading a lot of nonfictions lately. Uh, but this one, this is They Can't Kill Us Until They Kill Us. This is a group of essays. Apparently this is popular, but I had never heard of it. I quickly looked on Goodreads just before I filmed. The reviews are really positive, so I'm hoping that I will also enjoy it. Let me know if you have read this because now I'm excited. Let's start with the fiction books. So one of them was part of my March wrap up. This is the uh, last book by Peter Swanson, Nine Lives, it's a mystery thriller, a murder mystery really. Um, nine people receive a letter with their name on it and eight other people and then they start dying one by one. And I thought I would be overwhelmed by nine characters but you do get a little bit of a list uh, in the beginning so it helps plus they start dying so there's less people to follow uh, <laughs> I thought the book was fine I feel like with him my problem is that the first book that I read by him has been the best book that I read by him and 
I have read like seven or eight at this point and it's been really up and down and this one was fine. I feel like it's a good beach read to me because you can easily put it down but it still grips you enough that it's fun to read at the beach. Plus a lot of it happens close to the water so for me it's like beach read. But my issue with it was the epilogue. I don't know why so many mystery thrillers have horrible epilogues. I, they, they're never good. So I don't know why they exist. They sh this one should have been removed. But yes, otherwise I was fine. I feel like it's probably gonna be a book that divides people, but to me it was like a three stars. It was fine until the epilogue. <laughs> oh, before I forgot, I got two eBooks. Um, the first one is Razorblade Tears because there's a lot of hype behind it. Apparently a lot of people like this. Uh, both of them are actually mystery thrillers. And this one has really, really positive reviews and I wanted to get it from my library. The waiting list was ridiculous. They didn't even have the audiobook, which a lot of you told me to get the audiobook, but I got the ebook because it was on sale for like $1.99. So now I have it. And the second one is Every Last Secret, which is part of the Goodreads reading challenge for this year, even though I said I wasn't doing it, but I looked at the list again and out of like the 20, I think I've read like eight or nine already. So, I mean, I might as well read a couple more. <laughs> to let you know which ones were worth it, uh, their new releases from last year. And uh, it's been really hit and miss so far, but hopefully these two will work. I think the other one, was it this year or the year prior? Yes, 2021, so I was right. So both of them, I guess, are part of my Goodreads reading challenge that I said I wasn't doing. <laughs> Uh, speaking of which, I also wanted to kind of do it for fantasy just because this year was the first time or last year was the first time that I had read none of the contestant in the fantasy section, which has never happened. I don't know how that happened, but I've been trying to read a couple because they're new releases and some of them do have a little bit of hype, including this one, which is a Master of Gin, which I just want to try it because the reviews have been positive and it has been recommended to me. So when I saw it at the used bookstore, I had no choice. Another one that I was excited to find was this one. This is Shutter Island. I've been trying to read like popular books, including ones that were made into movies. I've obviously watched the movies, but I never read the book. So I'm hoping that the book will be even better. I remember I, I watched the movie a while ago, but I remember it being like a little unclear. It's not that I didn't get it. It's just that, you know, when you watch a movie and you're like, I'm sure it was explained more in the book. That's kind of the feeling that I got from it. So I will try it and I'll let you know. One that has been recommended to me so many times, but the library waiting list was just ridiculous, is this one. So I decided, you know what? It's there, let me grab it. Uh, this is Piranesi by Susanna Clark. She also wrote, what was the other book that she wrote? The one with the really long name for some reason, Mr. Norrell, <laughs> Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. Anyway, the book is humongous and I just never got around to reading it because it was scary looking, but this is her newest fantasy release and a lot of people have been telling me that it's weird, but great. Although some people hate it, some people love it. We'll see where I stand. I'm just really curious at this point. And this is the cover. It is so strange and I'm looking forward to reading it. It's actually much shorter than I expected. It's like 250 pages, so I can totally read this and I'll let you know how I stand because again, people seem to be really divided. When that's the case, I just, I get too curious and I want to figure out where I stand. It just, I need to. It's it's a problem sometimes. Um, I think this is the last fiction book. I have been trying to read some of the most popular work of popular authors I've never tried, so I can decide if the author's for me or not. And one author that was suggested that I do that with is John Mars. This is the one. I think this is the most popular work, so I try to like pick you know two or three that are their most popular work and I can decide. But yes, I had a few uh, ebooks by him. I think I have like The Passengers, which I think is the second one with this one. So I couldn't like read that one without reading that one or I would have spoilers. So I saw it, I grabbed it and I will hopefully enjoy it as much as everyone else. I believe they're like all like murder mystery thrillers. So we'll see. Uh, a few nonfiction. I've been trying to find topics that are interesting. The only thing is that it's difficult to find used nonfictions that I'm still interested in. I feel like the most recent releases are the most interesting and I use my library for that, but the waiting lists are very long and I do like to own copies of the ones that I really enjoyed, but I saw this one and I just needed to grab this. This is The Girls Who Went Away, The Hidden History of Women Who Surrendered Children for Adoption in Decades Before Roe vs. Wade, which I think that with everything that's going on currently in the US, it's extremely relevant. I think this might be a very interesting topic. I mean, I live in Canada, which is different, but I feel like Canada is like always a few years after the US. So hopefully uh, we don't need, <laughs> we don't need that. Uh, but yes, I thought it would be interesting to read more about their stories, 
This one I don't know a lot about, but it was recommended personally to me when I said I was wanting to read more nonfiction. This is Debt, The First 5,000 Years. And apparently this author is just really, really great. And this was so much thicker <laughs> than I expected, but it was recommended to me. So when I saw it on the shelf, like so bright, I was like, this is a sign that I need to own this. So this is basically about like human history of like credit systems. So that sounds really thick <laughs> and like heavy of a topic, but apparently it's really good. So I'm a little nervous as you can tell. And because a lot of the non-fictions that I pick up tend to have very serious topics, I saw these two and these seemed lighter. So I thought maybe that could be fun also. Uh, the first one is Survival of the Friendliest, which is about understanding our origins and rediscovering our common humanity, which I think is really important. I think it's because I just read All About Love by Bell Hooks, but I feel like her society is so individualistic and I feel like she mentions how our lack of community is obviously preventing us from really, you know, getting the love that we need. And I feel like this might be something that uh, helps me, us. So I'll let you know how I feel about it. But I just like the cover. Let's be real. It's so cute. Um, and then the other one on a similar topic is this one. This is Together, the Healing Power of Human Connection in a Sometimes Lonely World. I'm always a little nervous when I see like healing in like nonfiction category because I am not religious or like spiritual whatsoever. So that always makes me nervous, but I saw that it's uh, from the 19th Surgeon General of the United States. So that, that might be more safe for me. But like I said, it's a topic that I'm really interested in. So hopefully I enjoy that one. I will keep you updated. And I believe this is last but not least, I got that one purely based on the cover. I'm hoping it's good. I just refuse to look up reviews because if the reviews are negative, I'm going to be sad. D d d just look at the cover. Isn't it a mood? Um, too much. How Victorian constraint still bind women today. I, listen, I just need pictures of this book all over my Instagram or Pinterest or something. Like, this is so pretty and cool. So <laughs> I'm hoping this is going to be great also. And if it's not, I'm still going to keep it. I usually don't keep books I don't enjoy, but this one, I just need to like showcase it on my shelves. I think that's one of the things that I need to do. I don't know if you can kind of tell my shelves are kind of boring looking. Like I need to like put some books like this, right? So you can see them. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm really excited to read this book. This was a nice little book haul, right? I'm super excited to read My Brilliant Friend because my friend has been raving about it so much. I think I'm going to put it on my May TBR, which Maybe you can even read it for the Patreon book club if you're interested. I'll offer it in the options. So this is it. Uh, thumbs up, subscribe in the comment section the last couple of books you have bought because I want to know. Or if you have any opinions on these ones, which ones I should prioritize, please let me know. I will be putting more videos on the screen that I recommend you check out. And I will see you in an upcoming video very soon. Bye. I missed an opportunity to make Emily wear this, the whole video. Let's pretend it was there.